and I am a second year medical student at the University of Nottingham. Have you guys ever had a subject which you find really difficult, you find the workload so overwhelming and you find it almost impossible to do well in exams even though you have to? Despite being at medical school, I have struggled and continue to struggle with subjects even at university. For example, in sixth form, I had to get an A in physics to, in order to get into medical school and only four months before my real A-level exam, I was on the BC border. And even now at medical school, I struggle to learn and understand anatomy and embryology. So how did I manage to get the A in physics that I needed and how do I continue to do well in exams at university? Watch and find out. My first tip is to set small achievable tasks. If you are good at a subject, it is easy to work for it. You can tell yourself to do a past paper and it is easy to go ahead and do it because you know that ultimately, you'll get a good mark and that will make you feel good. However, with subjects that you find difficult or boring, this isn't the case because you will struggle to get the information that you need, you'll struggle to understand the question or struggle to answer the questions to the standard that you need to in order to receive a good grade. However, setting smaller, more achievable tasks will mean that they are easier to dissect, easier to research for and easier to complete. It kind of tricks your brain into thinking it's achieving consistently, which will mean that you're more likely to continue to do the tasks that you need to in order to receive a good grade and this kind of like hacks into the theory of operant conditioning which is the thought that the more pleasurable the consequence of an action the more likely you are to keep doing it this brings me on to my next point making the action of revising or studying for that subject more pleasurable. This will once again mean that you are more likely to continue to do it. So for me, whenever I'm making my Anatomy Anki flashcards, which believe me, you have no idea how many I've had to make, I put on my favorite playlist. And this means that now I way prefer doing my Anatomy Anki flashcards than watching lectures on subjects I prefer because I get to listen to this playlist. So for you, this may be putting on your favorite playlist. This may be, you know, making your work area look really nice so that you can get a picture of you revising maths or only buying your favorite drink when you sit down to revise that topic or do that essay. Once again, hacking in to the theory of operant conditioning. My third tip is to do a little and often. It is impossible to do a subject you hate for eight hours a day over two weeks. This means that if you have an exam on a subject you find really tricky or you have an essay to do, don't leave it to the last two weeks leading up to that deadline because you will be relying on that last minute pressure and I promise you, you will be hating every single minute of it. Not only will it be less enjoyable, but you definitely won't do as well as you could in that exam or that essay. Scientific evidence suggests that you have to come across a fact, I think it's like seven times before you actually learn it. So you definitely won't have learned the content that you need to by cramming it in a short period of time. By doing a little bit over time, you are using that space repetition, i.e. going over the same information over regular intervals to ensure that your brain becomes familiar with the content and can answer these tricky questions with ease. My next tip is to break up the subject into smaller components. This is beneficial in two ways. It is much easier to be motivated to actually go ahead and revise if you are revising something like, let's say, circuits, instead of just saying, right, today for eight hours I'm going to revise physics. Secondly, you're way more likely to do better in exams because you can go into that exam knowing for certain that you have systematically reviewed and revised every single topic in the syllabus. So you know you won't get caught out by the examiners. So use your specification, use your essay plan, use your lectures and modules to find out what you need to know what you need to revise so that from there you can design a revision timetable and have a revision plan in place. My next tip is to iron out the problems immediately. Don't let them build up. It is so much easier to continue to ignore issues that you're having. For me, this was the fact that I really struggled with mechanics and no matter how much I looked over how to answer the questions such as Suvat's, no matter how many practice questions I did, I never seemed to get them right. So what this took is for me, every day after school leading up to my exam, begging my teacher to explain to me how to answer past paper questions until eventually I developed the second nature and was able to answer these mechanics questions simply by seeing him doing it correctly time after time. So whatever your issue is, don't let it build up because it's gonna be so much harder to tackle and it will definitely affect your exam performance because you'll be going into the exam gambling with your success because you'll be hoping that certain questions that you never found out how to do won't come up. And I can tell you this as a tutor, 
I hate it when I can see my students struggling and they don't tell me, look, can I have help? Because I don't know how to help them, but if I understand that they're struggling and what they're struggling with, then I feel so much more reassured because I'm like, okay, now I know how to help them. So I guarantee that your teachers will much prefer you getting good grades than perhaps a slight inconvenience of you asking them over and over again. And alongside asking your teachers, with embryology, for example, I heavily rely on peers in the years above because they have also struggled with the content just like you. So maybe they found loopholes or shortcuts to revising and understanding the content. My next tip is to work out what the problem is. Are you struggling to get through large amounts of content? My advice, if this is the problem that you're having, is to, as I said, split it up so it feels more achievable to get through each component of the overall subject or deadline, rather than having that overwhelming thought of having to do all of it, and to do a little bit over a long time. So always try to anticipate how long something's gonna take you so that you can complete it over a long time because it means that one, you will understand the information better, and two, it will feel less overwhelming to complete the work. If the problem is failing to apply content you think you have revised in exams, don't worry, I got you. My biggest tip as a tutor, as a student that's failed and succeeded, is to do past paper questions, past paper essay practice, anything. Because revising from flashcards only helps you with questions which are fact recall. So for example, what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a production of glucose from light energy, for example. But the tricky questions, the questions which will catch out students are the ones where you have to apply knowledge to dip for data analysis, etc. So the only way you can consistently do well in these is by continually practicing these questions and getting that exam technique up to standard and getting that sort of gut instinct for what to do. If your problem is that you're not understanding the content, something that I really love doing is explaining the concept to someone because let's say I feel like I don't understand the embryology of gut formation. I, by talking it through with someone, I can tell that when I begin to sort of waffle or stutter, that is the exact link in the overall process that I don't understand. So I can then go and look up that specific part of the process and almost get rid of the weakest link in my knowledge. Also, this is an evidence-based way to revise. It is much better and much more active than passive reading or passive writing notes. So I definitely 100% suggest this. Even talking out loud to yourself. Also use um, diagrams if you need to. For example, if you find it really hard to visualize something and you know write out the process descriptively, find on Google Images a diagram, a picture. Another thing that you can do is go back to the syllabus and think, what do I really need to know? I know that in my A-level textbook, sometimes they'd go on massively long tangents and they'd have like little boxes which is like further information and I was like oh my gosh do I really need to know all this by going to the syllabus I could see that what I actually need to know was what much simpler and I could focus on only revising that understand that struggling with subjects is natural and it takes time to understand don't worry if you don't understand concepts straight away or are taking longer to understand and figure it out than the people around you everyone is on their own personal journey and it will click at different points for everyone but it doesn't matter as long as it ends up clicking for you as long as you follow these tips and continue to try different study methods and find out the one that's for you and do lots of practice I guarantee you there is no way you won't do well in that exam because let me put it into a formula for you. Figuring out the correct study technique multiplied by practice equals getting that A star, getting that first you want. My next tip is to celebrate small achievements. Don't put yourself down. Small achievements lead to big achievements. And you deserve to pause and give yourself credit for even if it is getting one question right, because loads of those one questions that are right eventually leads to an A star. So call your friend, tell your mom, look, I just got this question right and I've never done that before, because you deserve that boost in your confidence. So that is all for today, guys. I hope you found the video useful. Let me know if it was. And remember to like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications. See you in the next one. Thank you.